Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now here's the guy who's ready to feed the podcast monster. I am Rob's sister, Nino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our recap of episode number nine of Survivor 43. We've got a great guest who is going to be here with us in a moment, Desi Williams, uh, Survivor HHH and the challenge CBS and uh, very excited to talk to her. Let's uh, welcome in Desi. Desi, how are you? I'm great, Rob. <laughs> Happy to be here. Desi, that bell gets me every time. <laughs> yeah, you like it or it's uh, annoying? No, no, no. I like it. I like it. I guess I'd never realized that like people were dinging the bell as they were talking. I thought it was like something edited, well, like edited. Yeah, just in me. Post. No, just me. It's uh, yeah. I'm the only one that does it. Uh, yeah, other I people like they they overdo it. I you know try to keep it just just me. Um, Desi, how are you? I'm great. I can't complain. How are you? Yeah, I'm very excited to chat with you. And I thought we got a really good episode of Survivor to talk about. I had the chance to do the double exit interview uh, with Ryan and with james uh this morning that podcast is up on rob has a website.com if people want to uh check that out got some more information about everything that's going on desi in my research for this podcast i also uh found out that uh, i want i'm trying to figure out how many years back it was but it might have been was it five years ago this week that you were somebody who was voted out of survivor at the final 10 yeah was it five uh, yeah that that is about spot on maybe a week prior i was the first member of the jury but it was five mm -hmm. years ago yeah yeah, yeah. so a, a, i do a podcast with somebody who do, goes back into survivor history and so that we have to look up uh what happened on this week in survivor history and in my research for that that it was uh, you know, your uh, boot episode on uh, the, on this week. So I don't know. There's something. There's something about this week. Yeah, yeah. It's a bad right week before Thanksgiving. Bad yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Very bad week. <laughs> All right. Um. So we've got a lot of Survivor to talk about. But uh, Desi, what's going on with you? Of course, we just watched you on the Challenge CBS uh, this summer, which was wild. Yeah, Challenge CBS was a lot of fun. It was wild. It was like fun and stressful. I didn't realize how afraid of heights I was and mm -hmm. so they were like oh rappel down the side of this building um but fun great experience um ups and downs obviously there was sure. a really low low there for me towards the end mm -hmm. uh, but other than that I'm healed uh since then I've gotten engaged so that's congratulations exciting. yeah it's, I've been waiting my whole life for this moment so mm -hmm. thank you um also am working on a show called the college tour um where i'll be working as a i'm working as a host on the show so that's kind of a new avenue and something cool new and fun i've got going on yeah um we are live for the patrons of robin's podcast if uh people have questions uh, they can go ahead and ask them and we can uh, bring them in later on in the show i also have a bunch of questions uh, that have already been sent in desi about uh everything that went on uh, with this double tribal let me ask your opinion on how are you feeling about survivor 43. i'm actually really into this season so i mean most people know about me i'm not a survivor super fan i'm very much like a casual viewer but this episode i mean this season has been pretty good like i mm -hmm. every wednesday i'm like Jer jeremy's my fiance i'm like jeremy do you mind if we watch survivor tonight because he's not into mm -hmm. <laughs> reality tv at all it was like torture making him watch my show mm -hmm. um so I i'm i'm into it overall it's hard for me to keep up with the advantages but there hasn't really been that many coming into play the past couple of weeks um but i've been enjoying it i think there's some great characters this yeah season. Well, this was a super exciting week uh, with everything that went on. Uh, I, I really would love to know, is there one person in particular that you feel like that you identify most with uh, as you're watching the episodes? Uh, how did I? So the only thing I have a hard time with this season is I feel like everyone's a super fan. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's 
a good and bad thing. I don't know. I don't love that everyone's a super fan because it makes it hard for me to like I was not a super fan before I went onto the show. I was hold like, on, hold on, Desi. Viewer. But weren't you the person that went back and listened to David Bloomberg's podcast <laughs> to get all of the ways of how to win? I mean, you, that's you that's kind of super fanny. Well. Yeah. Well, that was more and that was once I had a suspicion that I might get casted. So that was more like studying. I'm a great student. I, mm -hmm. I'm a very studious, uh, overachiever type of student. Yeah. But I would never have done that like as a casual viewer. Just, I mean, it was an entertaining podcast, but I would not have done that had okay. I not known I was. Well, then let me just get your backstory on then. How, how did you end up on Survivor then as somebody who is not a Survivor super fan? Oh, gosh. I almost hate to like say this aloud because I think people kind of hate it, but I was recruited for Survivor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I got like a message and on in, on Facebook in my like other inbox. And mm -hmm. and they were like, you should be on Survivor. Yeah, yeah, literally. It was like, have you ever considered going on the show Survivor? And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I didn't know. No, I actually haven't. Like, yeah. I, I was a pageant girl at the time. Like, my profile was all, all these beauty shots. And I'm like, obviously, Survivor is not at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. um, did but they have to actually Jessica, who I had? Would you say? Did they have to convince you? Not well. First, I had to. I like research the casting director to make sure it was legitimate. Like yeah. I, but after that, after I knew it was legitimate, it didn't take much. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm very much the type of person that's like, if an opportunity comes my way, uh, it's take hard it. to say no, even if mm -hmm. I'll be starving on a deserted island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that okay. was kind so of my origin story. Jeffra from Survivor Kagiyan uh, was the person that you knew? Yeah, so she and I had competed in a pageant together a couple of years prior to that. So I don't know, when you go through Survivor cast and you think that you literally can't tell anyone. So I didn't tell her that I was going through that process, but um, it was my, I think that was the thing that made me feel like I could do it. I'm like, I, I know Jeffra. She's a very regular girl, just like me, pageant mm -hmm. girl. And she survived, so. I yep. can probably survive. Yep. And um, so do you keep in touch with her? Like, I can do it. Desi, have no. you kept in touch with Jeffrey? No, nobody. I don't. I think she's one that nobody knows <laughs> what she's doing. Yeah. 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 I think I followed her on Instagram for a while. And then I don't even know if she's on Instagram anymore. Who knows? And Instagram doesn't show you your friends anymore. So I don't. Mm -hmm. There's no way for me to know. Mm hmm. You know what else I thought was interesting was I was looking over your bio from Survivor and I saw that they asked you, okay, who's the player that the former player that's most like you? And you said Tosh Fox, who played with Jeffra, who then you went on to go play with on the challenge. Yeah. I love I love Tasha. I yeah. love her too much more. Yeah. And I would be, I mean, I don't know that I, I think maybe in some ways I played like her. I do feel like Tasha is such a genuine person. Um, and you can, like, she kind of shoots straight from the hip. She's loyal. She's trustworthy. Um, and she was able to navigate that through her game a little bit better than I was. But mm -hmm. I, I, to this day, like, have nothing but glowing things to say about Tasha Fox. Yeah. Well, in your season, it was interesting that Survivor 35 was the last time they did three tribes before they decided, you know what? Now we're always going to do three tribes. The, do you like the three tribe format for a season of Survivor? Because I kind of feel like that after, for whatever reason, after 35, they said, all right, we're done. And then decided, oh, I actually, you know what? We're going to do this only. Huh. I actually don't because I don't know the Survivor facts. I didn't know that that was a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the three tribe format. I like... I feel like when the tribes are too large, you one don't get to really know people like as a viewer, you can't really get to know people's individual characters because there's just too much. Like when a group is too large, I feel like people don't really show up as their genuine selves. They're more like standoffish. Um, so I like just generally speaking, like smaller tribes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it, you know, it was all small tribes for uh, the people that you played with in season 35 because you were it was, you know, six, six, six. And then ultimately, then they swapped to tribes of five, uh, which we saw last night uh, that we're back to tribes of five. And yeah, I guess there's there is nowhere to hide. Wait, so do you think that they're staying tribes of five? Like, do you think? No, that no, they'll go. No, they'll go back. This is just. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah. I, w I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't interpreting last night's episode as that was like now. No, definitely not. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but as a player that, you know, you really like having to, you know, play uh, so much harder right out of the gate where, you know, it's a like, you know, you're thrown into the fire so much. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely nowhere to hide with the Tribe of Five, which I think is a good and bad thing. Like if you're a, yeah, I mean, it ended up being a really great entertaining episode last night. So I kind of appreciated it. It it definitely, I think, changed the power dynamic in a way I was not expecting it to. Yes. Um, But I think had I been out there playing, it would have made me super anxious that like, oh, crap, I've got to basically start all over and do it in a four hour time stamp before we get to Tribal Council. Tell me, going back and watching this, uh, was there anything that you saw that James did that you thought might have been a mistake? (laughs) I think there were, okay, so I'm going to start by saying James is my winner pick, so I feel like a complete idiot. And I like had, a lot of people did. Other people that James is my, like the winner pick. Um, I was so sold on James, so I feel like an idiot. Um, Desi, don't beat yourself up, okay? (laughs) Last night's episode, I think we saw a lot of, uh character flaws and i was watching the episode like he's still my winner pick but like how does he make it much further than this because he kind of came off as a bully a little bit this episode like Mm -hmm. a little too cocky a little too aggressive um and that's a really scary spot to be in in survivor i think he was somehow in a good spot even though he's been like the clear threat for me for a very long time, but still, I think just such a good strategic player that it worked for him. Um, but last night, yeah, he, he came out like a wrecking ball, I think. Yeah, he uh, definitely got into it with Owen. And I thought that that was, you know, so unusual for Survivor because I feel like that we almost never see people get into big fights uh, that we like saw like last night. And, you know, and and I loved it just as television. I didn't think it was like gotten like mean spirited or like, uh, you know, either person like said things that they regret. It was, you know, just fun to see people yell at each other on television. you know, you were present to uh, at, at least one uh, argument like that that I can remember where I believe it was uh, Joe and Alan were uh, yelling at each other uh, in in a similar sort of way. Uh, wh- what's it like for the survivors <laughs> when stuff like that is going on? Yeah, yeah, that was that was a very triggering moment for me because I was like, oh, gosh, not the, not the yelling. Yeah. Um, you were like Noel. Well, I was kind of like no, like Noel is exactly how I would have reacted in that moment. Like, this is, has nothing to do with me. Only the dynamic was a little bit different when it was like Joe and Alan because it had a lot to do with me. Essentially, like Joe was my ally. Alan was, I guess, uh, what's her face? Uh, Ashley's ally at the time. So I knew that like him getting into it with Alan could potentially affect my game. I think Noelle was in a position where she was like, y'all can go at it and put the target on each other's back, but the target is not on my back. Um, So I think that's where the arguments differ a little bit, but I would have reacted the exact same way as Noelle. Like it's kind of entertaining because not a whole lot's happening on the island. Like mostly you're pretty bored when you're sitting on the Survivor Island. So to have like a little, feels like watching television. Um, But when you're mixed up in the drama, it becomes really scary because the drama becomes television. Like the drama becomes what everybody is then fixated on. Mm-hmm. Until yeah. I feel like at, especially like just around the camp, um, it's rare that you get those types of like interactions that I feel like that everything is like pretty calm for the survivors, which is probably the opposite of how it is at the challenge house. Uh, um, you would be shocked. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely on Survivor. I feel like most people are trying to play nice because you can't get away from these people. So it's like, I can't, I can only be like an asshole to a certain extent because I'm looking at this person all day, every day. Mostly people are nice in the challenge house to kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how to, yeah, I don't even know how to start that discussion. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back to uh, yeah. chaos and the challenge, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so for James, uh, ultimately, when he gets voted out, I mean, how do you think that this changes where we're going from here to have uh, James off the board? Do you see, like, a big winner on in your mind? I think it completely changed the dynamic. So I will say going into this, I was always kind of confused as to why 
like Carla and Cassidy were, I mean, I guess it's good to have the numbers, but also I felt like James was such a big threat that he's like, of course I'm going to take Carla and Cassidy to the end. Cause I can for sure beat them with a jury vote. Um, so it's, it's going to change the dynamic. And I don't know if it was a good move for Carla or not because cause now she's like, she's kind of aligned with some other people, but I feel like she's still probably at the bottom of that alliance versus being mm-hmm. at the top of her alliance with James. Um, but I can't even like envision where they go from here because I was writing James's coattail so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it just makes it like really hard for me to figure out where this game is going next. But I kind of feel like my gut feeling at the end of the episode was Noel is next to go home. Yeah, you know, it's such a big thing on Survivor where somebody makes a big move and then we see then, oh, that person just made the big move. They're the new big threat. They're the person that'll win if they get to the end. And so she's made this, you know, a very exciting move, which is is all hers. And now she is somebody who I think people are looking at. Okay, well, she'll win the game if she gets to the end. So I guess we're going to take out Noel. She, I mean, yeah, if you take, I mean, I feel like it's similar to like the Ben my season. I was always like, if you guys take Ben to the end, the jury is going to vote for Ben to win. If you guys take Noel to the end, the jury is going to vote for Noel to win. Like, it's just, it's, it's too clear for it not to be obvious. Um, so yeah, I think she, if they know what's good for them, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll take her out sooner rather than later. Cause she's only going to continue to build power. Yeah. And this was a, a really big move for Noel. Do you think it helps her that this move happened with only half of the tribe there at tribal council? Like, it's almost like that. Yeah, this was a really big thing that happened, but half the people weren't there to see it. I don't know that that even really so much matters because it's all going to get back to them. Like, everybody's mm-hmm. going to know exactly how the vote went down by the time they get back to the island. Yeah. So. I don't know that it really makes that big of a difference that the rest of the tribe wasn't there, um, except for the fact that it probably makes her an even bigger threat because yeah. nobody saw it coming. And they're like, oh, Noelle orchestrated this whole thing. And I think it's just going to raise some like red flags that I think people weren't seeing before. Yep. Desi, can I ask you something that's uh, it's just a test, like a thesis that I think that we always talk about in the Survivor podcasting, like as fact, but I don't, I don't know if anybody's like ever asked, you know, the people you played with where, you know, when Ben ends up playing all the idols at Tribal Council uh, and, you know, compared to, you know, where Chrissy won immunity challenges, I think that it's sort of like common knowledge to say like, well, the jury really like they saw they saw the idols get played they saw these big moves at tribal council and so that's the kind of thing that's way more important to a jury because they what they watch the thing happen as opposed to people talking about things that happen outside of the jury do you feel like uh that's an accurate statement so you're saying ben won because his idols were more impressive. Yeah, and I'm using Ben he, as he, as a example, like because that I think Ben gets cited a lot as like, oh, well, because the jury got to watch Ben play idols at tribal council, as opposed to that's more impressive to the jury because they were there, they saw that, as opposed to anything else that goes on in the game. Yeah, I don't actually even think his win came down to idols. I think we all were kind of like, how does Ben keep getting idols? This is suspicious and doesn't feel like. Ben is independently a great searcher of idols, like something else might be at play, wink, mm-hmm. wink. Um, I think that vote in particular, no shade, came down to like personality. Like I just think mm-hmm. Ben was the more likable person on the tribe over Chrissy, and nobody was super eager to have Chrissy go home with a million dollars, if I'm being mm-hmm. quite honest. Mm-hmm. That, that's what yeah. I feel like it came down to, but... You know. Yeah. So for ultimately like the, the jury, and this is something like we've like uh, definitely like speculated about, like uh, is going to vote based on, you know, likability and personal relationships more, even more so than resume. Like resume is something that fans talk about more so than the survivors end up like voting based off of. Yeah. I mean, I think it can be a combination. Like, obviously, if we can't respect your gameplay, no matter how nice you are, we're not going to vote for you. But also you're not going to. I mean, as some, as for me at least, I'm not going to vote for someone I truly dislike, even if I feel like they played a better game. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't like you. Why would I give you a million dollars? Yeah, 
I don't think it's ever happened. I don't think anybody's ever voted for somebody that they like really, and maybe if it happened, it's happened once, but people vote for who they like better. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. And yeah. And I could slightly dislike you and still vote for you to win. But if I like really don't care for you, I'm mm -hmm. not going to give you a million dollars. There's just like, what's the incentive for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for Carla, she ended up uh, getting the information that James was going to go home. Okay. Sammy comes and tells her, did you think that Carla should have done something to change James's fate? I want to say yes. But I, but I think what it boils down to, and this is the only way I can think of it. Like, yeah, I feel like she, this is why I can't play survivor. Right. Because, or why I am not good at the game of Survivor. Because I would have felt bad not telling my closest ally, like, you're going home tonight. Sorry. But I also don't really know if there's much she could have done, right? Because she stole, Noelle stole, stole Owen's vote. So yeah. that was already two votes for James. Mm -hmm. And then one other person votes for James. And James is going home regardless, really, of who Carla mm -hmm. votes for. So... So I think that the things that she could have potentially done, like uh, ideas that were on the table, one, convince Sammy, okay, this is a bad idea, don't do this, uh, and then let Noelle steal Owen's vote, and now she just wasted her steal a vote, and then we're still going to vote Owen out of the game. Um, I think that that would be, you know, a pretty, like, uh, good move to sort of, like, like really neutralize uh, that side, where now, okay, they lost the advantage and Owen in one vote. That would be pretty good. She also, you know, could use her idol. Uh, you know, if she, if Sammy doesn't want to do that, she could also say to James, hey, James, guess what? Like, take Noel steal a vote right now. You're like, uh, you are in danger. Yes. How, like, one, I don't think she could have convinced Sammy to do that. Mm -hmm. Like, who's, it does not benefit anybody else in the game to keep James in the game. Like, I think everybody has seen that in this episode. Like, James... In the episode before, like James is running this game. And if we let mm -hmm. James continue to run this game, he is going to run this game. So I don't think there was any convincing. Um, potentially, she could have told James to use a shot in the dark. But I think it kind of becomes one of those things where it's like we keep him in for one more vote. Mm -hmm. But if everybody already has in their mind that they want James to go home, he's going to go home the next vote. And then I'm going to go home the next vote after that because I'm part of the James group mm -hmm. so it really hurt my heart to see her go along with that but ultimately i feel like she was kind of backed into a corner and yeah i mean for carla like she probably uh is thinking okay i, I don't know if i can go to the end with james james i asked him in the exit interview who do you want to go to the end with uh and he said you know i would like to go to the uh, end with uh Cassidy and and with Carla, that's uh, ideally like what he said he wanted his end game to be. But he, what you know, his options were open. But if you're Carla, you know, one, you know, you could potentially like if people are coming for James, you know, that there is like a lot of heat coming for you. And this is something that you know we also wonder about, like if Carla and James both go to the end, is this Carla concerned that the jury is going to because this has happened a lot of times before in Survivor, where is the jury going to give the credit to? the man who in the final three, because they're going to say, Oh, it was, you know, this was James's Alliance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, a, and I think that's also why she would have gone home next because she was part of James's Alliance. Um, and I know some of that's like editing and the way we see it at home, but it, it mm -hmm. always felt to me like James was running that group. James was the leader. They were all going along with it because his ideas were good. How important is it? Uh, in survivor especially like in this 26 day game to tr you know get what you want to have happen but not be seen as the person who is the person who is running everything i mean it's it's a delicate teeter totter game because you mm -hmm. you don't want to want to seem as if you were carried through the game um but you also don't want to become the target so i i think we're at a point in the game where like until you get close to that final tribal council where we're having the jury vote. You need to try to live, like be on the right side of the votes, but lay low. Otherwise, I think it's just people get spooked easily and they want you to go.
Yeah, it's going to be interesting to me to see what happens in these next couple of votes, because I kind of feel like that, especially with Survivor 41 and Survivor 42, that, you know, you reached a point where, OK, there are people who are like the clear front runners. And now if they all go home in a row, I think it's sort of like, you know, you could wrap your head like into a pretzel trying to think about it of like, OK, I need to be the best player and then to be the best player, I need to not be the best player because then like the best players are going to all end up getting picked off. And so I need to be like the medium player, the whole thing. And then at the very end, I need to pop up. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just, it's a lot to, it's, it's too much actually to wrap my head around. Um, mm -hmm. And people are always like, would you play survivor again? And I would, but I also don't know that like, especially with this 26 day version, I feel like I'd almost do worse because I'm like, I can't, I don't know that I can keep up. Like there's just too much happening. Every day is so different. Like there were certainly days when I was on Survivor where it was like, I'm in a good spot. I can chill. Mm -hmm. I'm in a good spot. I can chill. But I feel like in this new version, like you can never chill because you never know what advantages at play. You like, there's just so many other factors. Um, so yeah, you literally can wrap your head into a pretzel. And my, I feel like my winner pick is going to change every episode from here going forward mm -hmm. yeah the dynamics it, are crazy. do you think carla is somebody who is going to be seen as one of these big threats now after this or do you think that now because james is out of the game that she's actually lowered her threat level i i think the latter of the two i think she's actually lowered her threat level um, mm -hmm. i don't think anybody saw her winning that individual immunity challenge i know i didn't i was yeah. like carla might as well give up now like her hand is broken like not broken but she had stitches like how mm -hmm. is she gonna do this um so i think she's positioned herself where she like people aren't necessarily seeing her as a physical threat everybody thought james was running that game so now they're like oh well maybe we can pull her in as a number um so i think carla's in a better position now than she was before for sure at the other tribal council there was a decision that had to get made of should we vote out ryan or should we vote out Cassidy. Now, I, I spoke with Ryan this morning, and what I found to be most interesting was that Ryan, I, I kind of thought he was with James. I thought he was like one of James's numbers, but Ryan was making it sound like, like no, he didn't even want to work with James. You know, he mentioned that he was like anti Coco, and I thought he was like anti Cassidy, but it seemed like he didn't have a great relationship with James either. Yeah, I think I got that. I got, I got that sense from last night's episode that mm -hmm. he didn't have a great relationship with James and I think I kind of felt and I'm sure he sensed it too like he was definitely at the bottom of that group like yeah we're gonna pull Ryan along as a number but like he's expendable mm -hmm. um, so I think I think I kind of envisioned him as always expendable to that group right and so I, I feel like that it's the Cody's and the Jesse's are sort of like they're concerned about the like Noel and Owens of the world. And I think that they might have felt like that Ryan was closer to uh, like the Noel and Owen side of things as opposed to Cassidy. OK, we know where Cassidy is. We know Cassidy is with James and Carla. So Carla is going to come back. Let's keep Cassidy in the game and maybe hope <laughs> Gabler is with us. Yeah, and I, I actually could not figure out the ryan vote because i i for sure thought cassie was coming going home and i was like is there something we didn't see that i should have seen that yes. i missed um because i totally thought cassie was going home i think she's the bigger threat than ryan um we see all the time like they take out these physical players physical players don't usually win the game of survivor so i don't know i thought i, I did not think ryan was the biggest threat in the game right now and i feel like ryan was so like pliable that you could pull him into any alliance at this point and he'd go along with it. Yeah. Ryan was definitely somebody like he just did not want to work with Coco. And I feel like that Jesse and Cody have become like part of Coco now. And so I think that it made it easier to get rid of Ryan than it was to get rid of Cassidy, who was part of that group that they were voting with. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. One of the big uh, takeaways from Survivor Triple H was that we had like your group, the healers, who, you know, came into the merge as like the strongest, no, the biggest uh, numbers. OK, and then we saw the heroes and the he and the hustlers, of course, uh, get try to like put their forces together to take out 
the uh, the biggest number. And now that's kind of become like the conventional wisdom of these three tribe seasons of that these uh, the, the tribes that are down in the numbers. And we saw it even this season of like, oh, Coco's got six. We all better team up against them. Um, and the tribe that ultimately comes in with numbers in the merge is actually not that great of a uh, position to be in. Yeah, I totally agree. It's it's funny that they even talk that way anymore because we've had enough seasons where that's happened, including my season. Where yeah. It's like, yeah, we had the numbers, but it, it fell apart like that immediately. Immediately. People are gullible. They're easily swayed. And to your point, like as a fan, you think that you need to make a big move and you need to create a resume. And it's like, no, you need to make it to the end with people you can win against. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird that people still try to align with tribes because it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to work out in the people's favor who stay in those alignments. It always works out better for those who go rogue, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it seems like it works for like a couple of votes to be able to like uh, go after like the the biggest group. Uh, and then ultimately, like it ends up like collapsing under its weight. Do you think it's a good idea for tribes in these three tribe formats to intentionally throw a challenge or two to make sure that they're not the group that comes in with the biggest numbers? Ugh, I wouldn't go that far. I, I just I see yeah, throwing a challenge doesn't sit well with me. Um, that takes a lot of confidence to be like, mm -hmm. I'm definitely not going home. So let me throw this challenge and send someone home. Um, cause I think part of the strength of going into the merge with the most numbers is you can, like you have the ability to play both sides and mm -hmm. it's, it, you are the smart one to like start building a strong relationship out track outside of your tribe. You tend to make it further, but it helps to have that previous relationship for the people who are still trying to stay. Coco strong, or like I was still trying to stay Soko strong. Um, yeah, it helps you to be able to navigate both of those relationships to get further in the game. I think you just have to have the wherewithal to know that if I'm going to win this game, if that's my goal, um, I need to look outside of my original tribe lines. Desi, how have you felt about Sammy so far and what he's been able to accomplish in the game? I appreciated sammy until last night he lost you <laughs> he lost me last night yeah what did he do because he got your well, winner pick out of the game i think that's i think that's the thing i'm gonna hold that against him but he did mm -hmm. kind of become like the ellie of the season like the beginning of the season ellie was like every piece of information she had she had to share with somebody else like can you keep a secret and i feel like he kind of started to fall into that persona last night but it worked it worked out for him so like respect yeah. but i'm still a little salty yeah because he took my winner pick out yeah uh well he's been doing the same thing all season long where people tell him something in confidence and then he goes back and like whether it's okay i'm going to tell gabler about that they went through his bag or i'm going to tell gabler about how okay that they actually just got an idol uh, and then I'm going to go back and, you know, flip on people and, you know, uh, tell tell the other group, you know, who has what advantages and things like that. And now we saw him with uh, he was the one that he went and tried to, you know, get Ryan voted out at the last uh, tribal council. And so he's just been able to I've been very impressed with how he's been able to navigate this. Yeah, it's shocking that he hasn't put a target on his back with all of his like wheelings and dealings but yeah sometimes he still ends up on the right side of the boat so mm -hmm. that's, that's working out in his favor but it's it's impressive especially because he's only 19 if we have to hear that one more time mm -hmm. I'll yeah it, but. well i think it's actually helped him that i feel like that the i'm only 19 or, or i'm only 22 because i'm i'm so young like i feel like that people are not as concerned about him as a threat because of that what do you mm. think of that theory I mean, maybe, maybe, but I don't see how that stands up. I don't know. Just because you're 19 doesn't mean you can't play the game and survive. Like, I don't feel mm -hmm. like that is an age is a determining factor. Like, if we go back among survivor winners, like, I don't know what the average age is, but I don't. Yeah, I think the average age is probably around 30. Uh, but there's definitely been, you know, a fair share of like 21 and 22 year olds that have won the game. Never yeah. a 19 year old, though, does it? No, okay, never a 19 year old. Well, mm -hmm. I'll give him that. But how many, I mean, have that many 19 year olds 
played the game. Not that many. Yeah. <laughs> Not that yeah. many. Well, I mean, I think just, you know, we're looking at odds here. Probably less um, than 10. Um, yeah. All right. So if you were out there with this group, who are the players that you would be aligned with? <sighs> man like what what, and 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 don't worry about tribes but just like what are the types of players that you would find yourself uh like feeling like that you could work with well i think number one on my list would be cody i really like his vibe oh that's so interesting yeah 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 i I think cody is playing like he started off where everybody thought that cody was just like this carefree guy that didn't care about anything and he's like really playing the game um but still, like, maintains a great mm-hmm. nature about him. And so I appreciate that. Was there anybody that you played with who has that kind of vibe? Mm, I feel like the closest person to him would have been a Devin. Who also yes. Was, like, oh, okay. A guy. Yeah. You know, does anybody keep up with Devin? And I feel like that he was somebody, when he played, that, you know, people came away from your season feeling like, wow, like, uh, he was a, you know, uh, he uh, could have won guy and he definitely should come back and play. And I kind of feel like that he's been a little forgotten. Yeah, he kind of, I mean, I think he, like, self-forgot, like, he he made himself forgotten. Do you know what I mean? Um, Yeah, I don't know where he is or what he's doing to be quite honest i know he mm-hmm. like had a kid i think he got married but i don't know where he's living or what he's doing mm-hmm. but i feel yeah. like that's the most similar like yeah what about in the challenge is there anybody else who is like a cody hmm who was like fun and carefree it was such a group that like nobody was carefree mm-hmm. everybody was a little too serious all the time mm-hmm. um i'm trying to think what about tyson no no not the same not okay the interesting same. well how are they different tyson is like uh, the most tr- the most strategic player like tyson is literally always playing the game and it's not mm-hmm. it's clear that tyson's playing a game he's like fun to be around he's got a great personality but it is always clear that like tyson is in control of his game mm-hmm. every step of the way yeah whereas i feel like cody is playing much more under the radar. I think Cody is in control of his game, but I think people aren't seeing the game that he's doing. Yeah. He's doing it well. Interesting. I would almost, (laughs) Cody almost feels like a Shannon to me. I don't know why. I think just like fun to be around. Shannon from uh, Love Island. Love Island. Yeah. I love Mm -hmm. Shannon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who else? Okay. So you're going to make an alliance with Cody. Okay. So definitely Cody. I actually do like Carla. I think she's, like easy to get along with. I think she seems down to earth. So I feel like I would probably get along with her and I would trust her. Let's see who else. I like Owen. Yeah. I think Owen's a great guy. So, I mean, like these people are not all necessarily playing on the same side. Um, but I, I really like Owen too. Yeah. We're just going off of like what types of personalities, you know, yeah. Owen, he does seem so easygoing, uh, but we saw him, you know, get really hot with James. That shocked me. I did not see that coming. I did not mm-hmm. see that coming at all. But I, I can see where his frustration lies. He's like, yeah, we were against each other for a while, but now I've been trying to work with you. Yeah. I've been going along with everything you've told me to do. Like, what else can I do to make you trust me? So, yeah. yeah and I'm sure they're, they're hungry. There's not that much talk this season about like hunger pains or like starvation, which is kind of weird. I feel like that's like all we talked about was like how... Mm-hmm than much we were dying um but you know i feel like in owen's everyday life he would not have blown up at james like that but yeah in, in the conditions he's in it's a little so bit harder to- can you speak yeah. to like the frustration of sort of like being frozen out of the vote because you know you, the healers come into the merge in your season okay and then it basically like it's clear from like the first vote like "Mm, we have the numbers uh there's nothing that you can do and i'm sure you're trying to have conversations you want to be included but like what what can you do when uh the like a group of players are just deciding like you know what you're not part of this i yeah it kind of feels like there isn't anything like it's a really hard position to be in like, and, and there is no, like, climbing your way out of it. Like, I, I had that in our season for sure. I tried to talk to Chrissy. Chrissy had no words for me. Go talk to Ashley. Ashley has nothing. Ben was like, oh, yeah, 
I'll work with you for sure. And then of course, like voted me out. So it's, it's it, it, like, I don't know how you navigate it at that point. Like they are solidly where they are in the game. Um, and without like hitting below the belt, like, it, I don't know, it's hard to like navigate what's going to inspire someone to like make a big move and not be a part of their numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and obviously I don't know how to do that or else I might've made it further on. Survivor. Well, it's definitely like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation where, you know, you could try to be like, you know, really like start to pu- like push the envelope of like, uh, like, Hey, like, Oh, uh, like, you know, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. Like, and like really like make things difficult. And then they want to get rid of you more. Or you could sort of just like, oh no, that's cool. Uh, well, you know, whatever you, whatever you all want to do. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. And then you know, and now the, it's just like you like bleed a slow death of that. Like, okay, fine. Uh, maybe you're the last person left, and then they go on to like bigger fish to fry. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a difficult mm-hmm. line to tow, and and that's I think what's so hard about survivors, especially like this season. I feel like there was a group who thought they were solidly in control, and you think you're comfortable. And then you split up into two groups of five and you have to start all over again with people who already dislike you. I don't Mm -hmm. know. It's hard. It's tough. And yeah, yeah, it's it's an awful position to be in, to be like, I am willing to work with whoever is willing to work with me and nobody is willing to work with you. It's kind of like a, I don't know. It kind of hurts your ego a little bit because it's like, why don't you guys want want to work with me? What did I do to you? Mm-hmm. No, well, you you were a healer, and we only work with hustlers and heroes around here. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Mm-hmm. That's right. mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, on the challenge, you know, you you played with Ben in Survivor, um, and it really never came up at all on the challenge that you two were actually from the same season. Did you have any sort of like working relationship with Ben on the challenge, based off of that you played Survivor together? Yeah, I mean, I think we. <laughs> There's like a lot of dynamics that were not shown on TV sure. in the challenge. Um, but I do feel like Ben and I were always on the same side. Like, I I will say that, like, after Survivor, Ben called me and he's like, I feel awful about blah, 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 how I was on the game. Like, he was very mm-hmm. apologetic. So there was a part of me that knew that going into the challenge, like, I don't actually think Ben would stab me in the back twice. Mm-hmm. So I felt like, I always had been as a number if I needed to have been as a number. Um, there was certainly a moment in the game where I was like, maybe we need to get rid of Ben. Like, is he messing up my game? But it is funny that a lot of people didn't seem to put that together that we were on the same season. So I think that kind of worked out in my favor because I was like, I definitely know that Ben's a number for me, but maybe nobody else knows that. Yeah. So when you go on to a show like The Challenge and now you're sort of like aligned with like all of the survivor people, um, do you find like, is there something like some common trait that you think that like most survivor people have that uh, maybe people that played on other shows don't like, is there a common denominator that you noticed? I mean, I think the biggest thing for us was the people from other shows really had like big issues with the living conditions or the food or like. (laughs) Like they just, everything was like, oh, I can't believe we're living like this. Oh, I can't believe we're eating this nasty fish again. Ugh. It was just like all of those things I feel like we're getting under people's skin. And we were mm-hmm. all just like, oh, we have a blanket. Uh, there's a toilet here. Right. There's catering. Like it's not delicious food, but it's three meals a day. Like what's yeah. complaining about? Yeah, we're used so, to lousy conditions. Like this is I'm an upgrade. I'm literally starving and still doing all these challenges. So I think that helped us out that we weren't being worn down by the conditions. Like it's kind of luxury in comparison to what we're used to. We we just have to focus on playing the game. And mostly we're just chilling because we're also in like a house with a front yard and a kitchen mm-hmm. and a gym and a couch. Yeah. Like it's not that bad. Was doing the challenge something that you had always wanted to do or was it like survivor and it just came up as like an opportunity to go do it so it's funny i the challenge was the first reality show i had ever watched uh, well not ever i watched like so as a kid i used to sneak to watch like real world road rules mm-hmm. and then when real world road rules challenge came out i was like oh my god shut the front door like this is a job this is real life like this is what people do and i was obsessed yep. um so i went through like a period of time I'd what say, was your favorite season 
I was too young to, I don't know. Okay. Her favorite season, but, uh, yeah, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I was literally 10 years old watching this show, mm-hmm. but I just remember thinking like, this is so awesome. I would love to do this one day. But then that dream kind of dissipates. It's all dream, like 10 year old dreams do, you know, you don't think it's possible. So when I got the call to go on the challenge, I was literally like, you guys sure you're calling the right person? Like I played Survivor five years ago. Nobody remembers me. Um, But it was kind of like, I had also that 10 year old in me that was like, this was your dream. Like, Mm -hmm. this was like what you wanted to do 20 years ago. Um, So I won't say I always wanted to do it. There was certainly a period of time where I completely forgot about the challenge and that it was a thing. Um, But there was also like the little 10 year old in me that was totally starstruck by the opportunity. And, Mm -hmm. And like, literally tech was at our la premiere party yes i remember just like staring at him like hot like i was nervous to talk to him he was like hi i'm tech what's up and i was like i know who you are like Mm -hmm. i became a little kid in that moment so there's still a part of me that's like was a challenge fan as a kid and and still fangirling over those people does have you run into other people that are like challenge alumni, not from the CBS challenge, but from the challenge proper? And have they been welcoming to you? Uh, I wish. No, I ha- I mean, not in real life. People have reached out to me, especially the way I went out on mm-hmm. the Challenge USA. I got a lot of messages on Instagram that were super kind and sweet and supportive um, from like the OG challengers. But I haven't. Maybe we don't rub elbows with the same people. I've not run into them on the street. Okay. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Desi, I wanted to ask you about tribal council and, you know, if you think that tribal councils have changed at all uh, since even when you played five years ago, where it, it just seems to me that um, we spend so much time with like uh, not really talking about anything at tribal council. Yeah, I didn't know if that's where you were going with it. Because that yeah. is how I feel about tribal council. I'm like, why is this lasting so long? Everybody's talking in code. Like, why does this even matter? Everybody's already decided who they're voting for. So, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think there was still some of that when we were, when I was playing the game. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because the game is shorter too. So they have less like stuff to show on the island. Um, because we sat, I, I mean, I remember tribal councils where we were, there, we were easily there for an hour talking easily. Yeah. And they just don't show that to the viewer because it's boring. Mm-hmm. Um, now we're watching a lot of it so i'm frustrated by having to listen to all of that like every i like i literally just tune it out most of the time because it none of it matters um mm-hmm. so right. i feel like that's they're like losing some good television time by showing that as opposed to more drama on the island but maybe there's just nothing else to show i don't know mm-hmm because one of the things I was speculating about was that, you know, we've had, you know, it didn't start this way. Uh, but then we had so many people come through Survivor that like uh, were really good at like talking about things like in analogies and metaphors. And I thought that like maybe the bar even got raised in your season where, you know, one of the analogy kings you played with was Ryan, who had a lot. Jeff really seemed tickled by that. And then I feel like people watch those and then they come out and that's how they're that's how they're like answering questions. And I feel like that Jeff is even asking questions that are sort of like, tell me, like, give me an analogy. Yeah, it's frustrating. I find it. I personally find it frustrating. Ryan is probably one of the smartest human beings I've ever met and also just like really witty. And I do think there's a way to make those analogies where it's entertaining, but everybody doesn't have that gift. In fact, most people don't have that gift. So now we're just listening to people talking analogies about a whole bunch of like, I feel like there was even a moment last night where you see like Noel rolling her eyes. And I was like, I feel you sis. Cause I'm also at home rolling my eyes because everybody's talking about nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why, that's how I feel about tribal council. Um, yeah. And it's, it's frustrating that I, I feel like, like you said, Jeff is egging it on. And he's like, like even sometimes he talks in analogies and I'm like, can we just, yeah can we just talk like Mm -hmm. normal human beings talk now do you feel like could jeff uh i I don't want to say uh you know take a page from because that's uh, i i don't want to be insulting but is there anything that they do on the challenge that tj does that might be able to like make these tribal councils a little bit more interesting um like i i mean no shade when i say this but like TJ doesn't do a whole lot. Let's mm-hmm. 
I like TJ doesn't do a whole lot. He he does not get involved in the storyline at all. TJ has no idea what's going on. Maybe if he does, he doesn't let us know that he has any inkling of the drama that's going on inside the house. Um, so I don't know that it adds to the show to like take a page out of TJ's book because TJ is just like memorizing his line and existing and mm-hmm. he's like I cool d- and chill, but. Yeah, I just feel like that, I feel like we get a lot more like screaming matches uh, for people like uh, on the challenge. So I don't know if there's necessarily anything with the format that we can use to sort of like create that drama, like that, like direct conflict, as opposed to like so many people just beating around the bush. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a product of the people, their cast. The format, yeah. In, in the for- Yeah, I mean, maybe if you gave people on survivor a few shots before tribal council like they'd have a little more say you know what i mean okay i I think i think that makes a difference you know desi this season on survivor uh we've seen so many more women voted out uh than men i mean last night you know was the first night where you know i kind of had anticipated that once we got to the merge the pendulum will swing back the other way and a lot of like the big physical threats uh, will get targeted. We did finally get to see that last night where James and Ryan, uh, you know, two of the bigger guys ended up getting targeted. But in your season as well, uh, that was another season where like I was going through and looking at the boot list this morning where I feel like that, um, you know, I think there were only like two men that got voted out like in the first like, you know, eight, eight or nine people. And then ultimately, like uh, the final five was uh, just the guys uh, and Chrissy. Yeah, that's actually interesting. And I don't know that I would have noticed that without you pointing it out. Um, mm-hmm. Do you I- think that well, first, that a lot of people talk about the, the three tribe format? is you know uh one of the reasons why uh this could happen do you think that that's the case because the three tribe format is why ladies tend to be voted out sooner is that what you're asking that's that's one of the popular theories that people have is that because then when these smaller tribes go to tribal council that people say like oh well we got to keep this tribe strong we need to keep the guys around yeah, and and to be, I think that's that's fair. I mean, I I watched Janine waste away all season. I was like, how I don't even know how she's competing. Um, so I think I'm it might be guilty of that bias too, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't want somebody weak on my tribe either. So mm-hmm. I do think that that contributes, and I don't think it's like a conscious bias that people have. But people, you do want to keep your tribe small when you're strong. Yeah. And I'm well, not gonna look at a tiny petite girl and think that. She's going to carry our team away. You only went to one uh, tribal council that was uh, before the merge, right? And you voted out Alan Ball. <laughs> yeah, this so is true. You did not so contribute was, to that this. Was for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, um, he had to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, Similar to the winner, like I, yeah. If I really don't like you, you, you gotta, you gotta go. Mm-hmm. So can I can I ask you that? Um, and I don't know if like uh, that a- anybody has uh like found this out. Okay, so you played with Alan, and you played with Danny. Do we know that they the both of them? I, I believe played in the secondary uh for the for the Cowboys. Do they know each other? Yeah, they, yeah. I think they played together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did did Danny or did Alan help uh, get Danny onto the show? Hmm. You know, I didn't ask that question. And Danny and I talked very little about Alan. It was kind of a passing conversation. Mm-hmm. And I almost got the sense that, like, they're not necessarily friends. Oh. I, I, but not, like, nothing Danny said. It was just weird to me that, like, Danny never tried to use so like I feel it would like have come up more. Example. I feel like if I were Danny, I would have used that as a way to maybe bond with me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But he he didn't. It was literally just like, oh yeah, I played with Alan, and then mm-hmm. there was never any discussion. Yeah, like, I did too. You're right. You're right. Exactly. Exactly. And that was mm-hmm. the end of it. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Part of that made me feel like maybe they're not as just because yeah. they were teammates. They were not necessarily. It, it, yeah, and you're perceptive enough to say, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like continue this line of questioning right right cool cool cool. Mm-hmm. yeah okay um 
I have some questions for you, Desi, from the listeners of Rob is a podcast. Okay. And so let me start off with one of our great listeners, Wendell Holland, okay. has a question. Wants to know what do you think about James Jones? And how do you feel about Carla allowing her right hand to get blindsided? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we kind of spoke on this earlier. Obviously, James is my my winner pick. I mm -hmm. like him. I think he came out way too aggressive this episode. Well, and Wendell I has to, you know, uh, back up, you know, uh, his friend from Philly. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously, mm -hmm. I would be disappointed if he didn't. So mm -hmm. I, I like James, but watching this episode, I was watching it like, why is he so cocky? Oof, why is he saying that? Ooh, why did he come out Owen that way? Um, so I was with James ride or die until this episode and i was like and i remember thinking like i will be shocked if he doesn't become the next target mm -hmm. like i didn't expect it to happen this episode but i thought maybe next episode um mm -hmm. he just came out a little too strong but, but similarly like this is why i have a hard time watching survivor and i had a hard time playing survivor because it's like i i have a, i personally have a hard time stabbing my closest ally in the back like mm -hmm. it literally is what voted me out of the game. Like literally. Yeah. I just had to write down my closest allies name and I knew I would have stayed in the game. Um, but similar to my position, I knew in the back of my head, like I can write down Joe and I can stay, but I'm going home the next vote. So like, does it matter? Like mm -hmm. does the three more days on this Island matter? Yeah. I'm the next person to go home. So and I feel like that was probably the position. When you're talking about, uh, writing down Joe's name uh, is that at the tribal council where Alan went home? No, no, no. At the tribal yeah. council where I went home, the votes were split. I don't know if you remember. We actually had to go back and, or they had to go back and vote for a second time. Yeah. We so, it, what, so it was what? Uh, yeah. That we actually. Um, I, I looked at this. So that yeah. So it was a, a four four one one. Is that right? Something like that. I knew mm -hmm. we were tied, and I yeah. also knew that. The votes were, I, I knew going into like, tribal that the votes would be split between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So I also knew that I could just write down Joe's name and I would. Uh, so you, you and Joe both voted for different people. I, yes, yes. Okay. Got it. Got it. And so, and, and if you had just written down Joe's name, it would have been five to four to one. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But Joe would have been really pissed. I mean, he would have been really pissed, but also I knew like, I'm here three more days and then I'm going home. Like, mm hmm I'm clearly the target. People want me to go home. Nobody's talking to me in this game. What's the point of me? Like backstabbing my one ally at this point. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me uh, bring in a question. Uh, this is from Josh Green, who says that Des, you were on a season where the women dominated the individual immunity challenges. Uh, recently, we've seen uh, the women go out uh, so much more early in the game. Uh, what do you think Survivor needs to do something to change that? Uh, and is it uh, changing different challenges early in the season or adding in different types of challenges? Stoked that Desi is on RHAP. Oh, thanks, Josh. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do feel like these challenges have skewed more in favor of the men. I'm trying to think of the, I can't even, what was last week's individual immunity challenge? Which one was that? Uh, last week was when Owen won, and they had to like hold. Was it the ball on the thing? Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So I, I mean, I feel like when you get to these, uh, potentially a woman could have won that, but I do feel like there's still some type of advantage of like being a little bit taller, having a greater arm span. Like I, I do feel like there was a um, like built-in male genetic advantage. Similarly, the one where I think it was Gabler, Cody. Mm -hmm. And I want to say yep. Owen again. Owen, yeah. 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 Holding on to that bucket. Like that's clearly, I mean, the women didn't even make it to that final part of the game, mm -hmm. but, but that part in particular, like in my head, I'm like, clearly a man is going to win this. Like they have greater forearm strength. Like it's just a genetic advantage. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I do feel like they haven't done as good of a job this season in making sure that the challenges are like yeah. truly neutral, gender neutral. Well, Desi, could they do potentially, uh, like we see on the challenge, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, men's immunity and women's immunity? Like, could they, and they've done this before in different rounds in Survivor history where it's like, okay, we're going to 
have one uh, we're gonna have like the the man and the woman that perform the best here uh and we're gonna give away two immunity necklaces yeah i mean i don't i don't hate that idea if i'm being honest mm -hmm. yeah, and it doesn't have to be every type of challenge but i i mean i think that you could do that in you know other, other types of challenges i think it would it would help the women i mean really the way the women seems to need the most help though is like in in the pre-merge uh i don't know exactly how you could do that but it feels like you know i don't think that that would really like change the game radically yeah i mean i guess it would change because you'd have to do it every tribal like mm -hmm. it would have to happen from the start of the season so i think it just trying to change the dynamics of like week wise like is one week going to be a male male elimination this next week going to be a woman's elimination mm -hmm. um, yeah I don't think you could change up the elimination. I think that first it's to still be survivor. I think anybody could still go home any week, but if you wanted to give out two immunity necklaces, uh, for like the man, like the man who's safe and the woman who's safe. Yeah. So I support that idea. I'm going to tell you why I think survivor will not do it. Um, is because we are now living in an era where it's hard to separate people based on gender I, yeah. and not be attacked. I, yeah. Okay. So I I like the thought of it. I think it creates like a fair way to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, but I think Survivor definitely won't do it. And I also think if we look at Survivor past, we see where they're like, like you said, women have dominated individual immunity. And I don't think it's because women had a genetic advantage. I think it was because they were having individual immunity challenges that were gender neutral and women happen to excel. So mm -hmm. I think they just, there just needs to be a little bit more um, specificity and like more careful calculation of what the individual immunity challenges are. Okay. Uh, let's take a question from Nick Fishman. Uh, take your pick. Who will be the first player currently ho holding an idol uh to be voted out or using it okay all right so this will uh let's okay let me just reset who has the idols okay, okay cody jesse and carla okay um so we'll ask two different questions who will use their idol first damn i didn't realize that the three of them had or the only three with idols yeah because noelle washed her advantage dang that's crazy mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna go with jesse mm-hmm Jesse uses it first. I think Jesse uses it first because I think out of those three, wait, does everybody know Jesse has an idol? No, nobody knows Jesse has an idol. And, and apparently nobody knows Carla has the idol either because yeah. I spoke with James and I thought that like, okay, well, I bet the Coco people at least know that Carla has the idol. He didn't even know Carla had an idol. Wait, that's, cr that's crazy. I thought everybody... How does everybody not know at this point? So then I think it has to be Cody because Cody's the one who obviously has an idol or does everybody not mm -hmm. know Cody has an idol? Either? No, people know Cody has an idol. But does everybody? I think everybody does because I think that Cody told everybody on Vessi and then because Vessi kind of had like a messy divorce uh, that I think that then they told people like Sammy and stuff like that. And then people like knew about Janine's idol and but they think Janine's idol got voted out of the game. They just don't know that it's actually Jesse that still has it. Yeah, but Carla has the same type of idol that Cody has. I don't know why the Coco thing has like nobody has cross checked that, or if they did, they did not tell James. Yeah, that's it's it's crazy to me. If people don't know that because literally they created their idols the same way. So and um, also Carla was telling a story that she thought that Lindsay went out of the game with the uh, idol. So there's a, a secret scene where she was at least telling Gabler she thought Lindsay had the idol and Lindsay got voted out of the game with the idol. But everybody at Coco gave her their bead. Okay. Does he? I don't know. I guess this is, sorry. This isn't the discussion people want to see. Yeah, okay. So mm -hmm. The question is it's fine. Who do I think is going to use their idol first? Uh, I feel like Jesse, out of those three, will become the next target. And I don't know why I feel yeah. that way. Well, I, I, I think that that could, that's definitely reasonable. I do think that Cody could be um, the first person to play the idol. This is my theory of where I think this is going. And tell me if you think that this is uh, crazy. Uh, I don't know if Steven was buying this last night. So I think that ultimately we're going into a Jesse Carla showdown. And I think that. The people on Jesse's side are at least Cody, maybe Gabler. And now Carla has 
definitely Cassidy, Sammy, and then I think that Noel and Owen are in the middle. And I think they're going to basically pick which side they're going to be on. And I don't think they really have a connection to go with Cody and Jesse. I think that they're going to end up on the Carla side of things. Uh, yeah, I, w- I would definitely think they end up on the Carla side of things over the mm-hmm. Jesse Cody side. So you think because of that, Cody becomes the target. I think Cody could be the next target because he is, is not in that group. If Carla decides, hey, it's time. I mean, and you know, you're down to, okay, you were working with these people, but now it's like, okay, well now we're going, going down to the final eight. We got to start to figure out who our five is, who our four is. Are they going to vote out Gabler next? Uh, you know, I, I think that they still want to make another big move. So who's the next big move? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see that. And even though physical threats don't win the game, I think mm-hmm. for whatever reason, people still feel the need to vote out physical threats. So I can see, I can see and also because Cody, he has an idol. You got to blindside him. You know, yeah. you got to get the jump on him. So it's like, okay, Cody, we're voting out Noel tonight. And then, you know, turn around and then vote out Cody. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, mm-hmm. I, I, I buy it. Even if Steven didn't, I buy it. I think that's, mm-hmm. that's a he good was theory. sort of on the fence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Kareem says, uh, who would you like to see most from this season on the next challenge USA? <laughs> Who would I like to see? <sighs> hmm. Well, what are we looking I, for I mean, in I a think, contestant to be on the Challenge USA? Yeah, I mean, I can see most clearly, like, the clearest path for a Cody. Like, I think mm-hmm. he's young enough, and, like, he's attractive, and he's... Living. Challenges. What do you say? He's living. Yeah, yeah. I think he would be a good contestant on the Challenge. Um, I could also see them pulling, like, maybe, probably a Cassidy, because she's beautiful, and mm-hmm. she's playing a good, a good um, strategic game, so maybe a Cassidy. How about Sammy? Uh, so, Sammy is 19, right? Is that what we're... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think Should he, he could be on the MTV challenge. I think he has to be 21. Hmm. He will be eventually. Yeah, I don't know when they filmed filmed this almost a year ago. Yeah, I don't... And I don't know why I feel that... Like, I feel like Sammy's playing a good game. But for some reason, I feel like I'm not connecting with his personality. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But to be fair, I don't know if people connected with my personality. And somehow I still ended up on the Challenge USA. So maybe that doesn't matter. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something about Sammy is, like, not not clicked for me yet. But Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But I don't dislike him. I'm just like, mm-hmm. just kind of there. And I feel like I should feel more mm-hmm. towards him than I do. I don't know. Yeah. How about Noel? Um, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. I, I don't know. I, I can't see a Noel on the challenge, but. It would be interesting. I, it was not, It's something that the Challenge USA would do that the MTV version of the show I don't think would do. Okay. So. Yeah. Tell me, put on your casting director hat. What are you looking for when you're casting the Challenge USA? So the Challenge USA, I, I think still, and I know this is like awful, but I, I, I think the Challenge USA is still mainly going for people who generally the world finds attractive and easy to look for. I think that's just like part of the Challenge franchise, like, Mm-hmm. We want you to look aspirational. So I think that's one. Um, that's the Challenge think, USA or the MTV? I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously the MTV version more than the Challenge USA. But I think Got still, it. I mean, I, I won't say everybody in their season was like a smoke show. But like there were more more smoke shows than not smoke shows. You know what okay. I, mean? <clears throat> so I, I won't argue like, with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd say that's like the number one thing for the Challenge. Um Second, I think you have to have the personality where, I mean, I, at least I think that this is what they were trying to do, where they think that you're going to be, like, fun. Because I think Survivor is, like, all about strategy, 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 whereas the challenge, they want people who are just going to be, like, mm-hmm. somebody who you're like, ooh, I really want to hang out with them, not just, like, I really respect their gameplay. Mm-hmm. Um, or I think you have to have that component that people want, would want to hang out with you. Okay. And then... Third, obviously, a physical player. Okay. All right. How about 
Um, uh, this is from Kyle the Meh Magnet wants to know, uh, what would happen if they made the challenge 26 days and gave you no food? Oh, I mean, already we saw that Survivor dominated regardless. Mm -hmm. um, but You're used Survivor, to it. Yeah, exactly. Survivor would clearly dominate even more. It just be an easier game for Survivor to win. Um, but for a majority of the people there, I think they would have like self dq Like there were people who already were ready to go home just based upon our living conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so had they shown up with the expectation that they'd be in a mansion and they were like actually on an island with no food, I think people would have gone home immediately. There would have been no season. Okay. Hartley wants to know, uh, Noelle seemed jittery and wanted to get to the vote at Tribal Council, likely because she knew she'd be stealing the vote and putting the plan in play to oust James. Uh, in the game, what's the best way to calm your nerves in moments like this? Uh, Do you agree that you, she seemed jittery? I don't know that it was jittery. I think she feels the way that I feel as a viewer. Like, what, I think it was, she was just overall the nonsense talk. That yeah. that was the vibe I got from Noelle. Was just like, can we stop with all this BS talk and get so on with the reason we're here? What I thought it was was so you know, it's a little bit like this was like a caper for Noelle and Owen. You know, this was like an Ocean's Eleven type situation of they have to get through this tribal council without James using knowledge's power. And, and I thought that she was like, uh, okay, so so can we get to the vote? Like, okay, because uh, like once we get to the vote. James's window to attack has closed. Like now Jeff is like, okay, time to use the idol. And she's like, ah, I, I, I'd like to steal a vote. And now once she gets to, I'd like to steal a vote, James can't say, uh, do you have an advantage? Uh, she's already like publicly played the advantage. And now, so I think that now, mm -hmm. so this was like, okay, is it time? Is it time? Can we open the presence now? And so I, I thought she was more eager to like, Clay, I've finally pulled this off. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's that's probably a better read on it than being annoyed with tribal council going on forever. <laughs> but, um, See, that might be a projection, Desi. Yeah, yeah, I think I was projecting my my feelings as a viewer. I think you're probably more right that well, she was. Were you ever annoyed when you were there? Like, uh, or is is that something like? Because I I feel like that maybe like in the room, maybe everybody's like really into it. It depends on, and that's why I can never, like, there were some tribal councils where we talked for 20 minutes and it was like, all right, let's vote. And I was like, oh, wait, I didn't say my piece yet. And there were other tribal councils where I was just like, how long are, like, how long are we going to talk? I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I think there are certainly moments where even as you're playing the game, you're over the talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's some moments where it's like, oh, that happened way too fast. And I thought we were going to be here for an hour like we were last week. And I'd have plenty of time to say my piece. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, how about from uh, Stefan? Who, uh, Stefan has a question. Uh, Desi, what are your thoughts on the feelings on the new format of Survivor? What are some pros and cons? Also, you are an amazing example of grace and elegance. No, oh, thanks. Stephane. So, is this uh, this is the first time it's popped up on screen like that? I like. This. Yes. That some of the questions uh, are from the uh, that we got beforehand, and other ones are from the live viewers. Got it. Got it. Well, thank you. First of all, um, do I like the new format again? Yeah. Like yes and no. I do think it's moving. I don't know. My jerk reaction is to say no. I, mm -hmm. I, I personally don't really like the new front format, especially I feel like early on in the season. And now we haven't really seen any new advantages into play. It's gotten kind of like dull in terms of like, where are there no more idols? Are there no more advantages to be found? Um, whereas I felt like in the beginning they were finding these advantages and then not really doing a good job of like explaining mm -hmm. the use of it. Of the, I don't know. So I didn't like that. And I also just don't like that. It's so much shorter. Like, are these people even miserable? Like mm -hmm. 21 days was, I was on the island for 21 days. I was miserable at a point in time. Yeah. Everybody's only on the island for 20 something days. Like, are you guys suffering the way I feel that you should be suffering to play survivor mm -hmm. and that, that, that's still not quite sitting well with me i want them to suffer like the rest of the <laughs> yeah <laughs> 26 days for me i feel like i don't get too bummed out about the 26 days i i do feel like that they maybe they could like do the, like divide it up 
better. I, I don't like that, you know, we spend like so so much time in the three tribes. Like I feel like that then, and then we merge on like day 13. Like I feel like that maybe we could spend some time in two tribes, get mm -hmm. to the merge with a smaller group as opposed to like uh, this bigger group. So the 26 days, like I, I'm not necessarily as out on it. I just feel like that, uh, like I feel like I don't like that they said, this is what we're doing from now on. And we're always going to do it exactly this way. Get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that too. I, I like that it was like variability. So you can't, even as a player, you can't predict like mm -hmm. who knew we were going to swap tribes twice and then merge. Like nobody really knows. And it was kind of weird that people were like, oh, I think we're merging today. And I'm like, how do you, I don't like that you know that already. I want you to like mm -hmm. on the edge of your seat. Like you should be when you're playing this game. Yeah. Yeah, in your season, yeah, I think it's the only season where they did three tribes and then swapped also two, three tribes. I don't yeah. think there's, a, the, you know, in all the other seasons, we go from two tribes. Ooh, now we're three tribes. Uh, and then we're three tribes. Like, uh, okay, now we're down to two. And uh, that was the only time that they ever did that with uh, three. And then you're still three. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't realize it was the only time, but I didn't mind that. I liked mm -hmm. it. How about the themes, Desi? Uh, uh, that was another one where, you know, uh, heroes, healers, hustlers gets brought up a lot. And we talk about the themes that they, it's, and they decided that from now on, just numbers, no more themes. Do you think that that's the better way to go? So I think the only reason I, like the themes are always a little corny, but also it's like Survivor's a little corny. And we all like, that's part of what we love about it. It's yeah. like, they just like <laughs> lean into that. Um, I, the only, like I said, I feel like now everybody's a super fan. So I feel like before, because they had these themes, they were pulling in these people who really had no idea what they were doing, which is kind of fun to watch too. Like, yes, it, it's hard to watch people who, like you said, know that we're merging now to one tribe. Like there's no variability. There's no, nobody's trying to catch up. Like everybody's just like, yeah, this is, this is what happens on Survivor because I've studied Survivor for the last 13 years. Um, so I think that's what you lose when you take away the theme is pulling in these people who maybe have not been dreaming of going on Survivor their whole lives, but are still like entertaining characters. And I feel like now they're all super fans who some are entertaining characters, but some are just super fans. Mm hmm. Aren't yeah. that fun to watch, frankly? You know, it used to be um, that, you know, that they would find people who, you know, went on Survivor for, you know, uh, a lot of different reasons, but like, hey, I, I'm here to win a million dollars. I'm here to like uh, win this money. Um, you know, now I do feel like that most of the people are like, hey, I'm here to be on Survivor because it's my dream to be on Survivor. Right. Because I was three years old dreaming of being on Survivor. Like, that's hard to relate to for people who aren't that watching at home. Mm -hmm. I just want to watch a good show with interesting people. Yeah. Okay, this is a question uh, for you. Should Carla lay low from now on, or do we see Carla getting closer to Sammy and trying to make big moves like getting out Jesse or Cody? Do you think that we will see Carla try to get under the radar? I think Carla will try to stay under the radar, but I think if she's smart, like you said before, she'll. I think she'll try. I think Carla's going to try to play both sides. Where she's yeah. gonna be like, I was still with you guys. I was just at the bottom of this vote. I had no choice. Mm -hmm. But then also, I think if she's smart, she creates this new path with a new group of people. And because she can, she can do it. She can do it. Because she's at the bottom of that alliance, so then she becomes less of a threat because yeah. she's not running that alliance. And she could say to Jesse, like, oh, Jesse, oh, my God, they voted out James. Can you believe uh, the, these jerks? Uh, the, uh, the, and, and, like, she knew about it. She was in on it. Like, she was. She uh, didn't, didn't she vote for him? I think so. I think she was uh, one of the vote. I have to go back. I have to go back and check uh, and see what the, you know, uh, you never know with Survivor now. They tell you, like, uh, one person voted for somebody and they act like somebody else voted for somebody. Um, so, um but she has this opportunity to be able to do this. Nobody's going to blow up her spot. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's mm -hmm. in a, I think Carla's in a good spot. She might be my new winner pick, but we'll see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I have one more question for you, Desi. Okay. 
Uh, this is from Maddie H. Dot. Is Enzo getting a holiday card this year? <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Yes, but in <laughs> fairness, you're probably not going to send holiday cards out to the entire yeah, to cast be, of the to challenge. Be fair, I actually asked my fiance, like, do we want to do this? Should we be sending out a holiday card? And he was like, yeah, I don't think it's really necessary. What was the decision? And we're not sending holiday cards. Yeah. I, yeah. Usually I would become in charge of them and I don't want to be in charge of sending holiday cards. So we're not doing it. Um, Are you excited when you get holiday cards, Desi? <laughs> so I am. I, I actually do like holiday cards, but we have holiday cards. My, I will say my fiance is a great guy. He's such a family guy. We still have last year's holiday cards on our refrigerator. Oh. And I'm like, shouldn't we throw these away? And he's like, oh, yeah, but this is he literally was like, I feel like this is a classic and we might want to keep this until this little girl is an adult and show it to her when she's 18. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Mm -hmm. We're holiday cards for the next 18 years of our lives. Like, give me a friggin' break. So I like holiday cards, but I think they have a time and a place and ours are well expired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what to do with them after a certain point. Like, I think I just put them in the box with the Christmas decorations. Like, all right, here, here's the 2017 holiday cards. What are we doing with these? I'm going to put them in the trash. Like, I have no issue putting them in the trash can. No issue. Mm -hmm. We're going to let it stick for a month. And then it's garbage. And it, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing away a picture of your precious child. But like, what am I, mm -hmm. I going to do with this? Does you know what my new tradition is with the holiday cards is then I, I don't open them and then I put them all in a pile and then I open them all at once. <laughs> okay. All right. It's like a. Yeah. And then let's, let's sit down. Let's see what everybody's up to. Get the get the stack of envelopes. OK. And it becomes like a big family event. <laughs> yeah. Me and, <laughs> me and my wife. I'll sit there. They're like, oh, look at this person. Oh, this was a good one. Right. And oh, like, oh, what, what, are, what are they even doing? This is well, this one. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cute. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't say it's <laughs> even yet this year, but um, I'm sure they'll sit on the refrigerator for entirely too long. Mm -hmm. Like I try to make it into an event now. Yeah, the, that's, that's smart. Make it exciting uh, rather than just a hassle. You got to. It's the new era, Desi. Okay. Great. Um, Desi, uh, anything else exciting you want to let people know about? Um, I think that's it for now. Okay. Hopefully there's more exciting stuff in the future, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Half the things that have happened in my life, I, like, I still don't know how. You don't know. Happen. People just, you get a phone call one day and they're like, hey, will you do this? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm not the type to say no, so I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think there will be more reality TV in your future, Desi? I am not opposed to it. Okay. My, my phone lines are open. Mm -hmm. Is there one show, much like when you were a young woman and dreaming of being on the challenge, is there another show that you would really like to do? Amazing Race. The Amazing, Amazing Race. Race. Who would be Four your – is it you and your uh, fiancé? Um. Yeah, but he I doesn't like I, reality TV. I thought I'm actually obligated to say him. I don't actually think he would do the show, which is why I'm like, why do you? I would love for Bryce Johnson to be my. I would love to go on Amazing Race. Mm -hmm. Although yeah. I think he would be awful. Um, but <laughs> he would be fun. But my, I think I'm contractually obligated to say my fiance Jeremy. Yeah. Um. Why do you think that uh, you and Bryce wouldn't do well? I'm not sure if either of us can drive a stick shift. Um, no, okay, but well, that's tough. I'm not sure about his map reading skills, but I know where mine lie. So mm -hmm. I, just, I feel like we'd have a lot of uh, preparation to do. Okay, but you can learn those things. That's true. I, I, all of our deficits, I feel like, are things that we could learn. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. think he would be a fun partner, and we'd have an amazing time, and we'd travel around the world, and it'd be great. Okay. Desi, any uh, social media you want people to follow you on? Yeah, I'd say my only real active social media is Instagram. And I'm okay. just Desi J. Williams on Instagram. Okay. Well, we still have a lot more Survivor coming up here on Rob's podcast this week as Hannah Shapiro will join me uh, for the feedback show this week. We'll be doing that live on Friday evening. And that's always a fun one when we uh, get together with Hannah. So you can get your questions in for that. Plus... Check out everything else going on in our Survivor podcast feed of all of the other podcast shows, including the aforementioned uh, Bryce and Wendell talking about the Survivor news on the Purple Pants podcast. So check that out and much more. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.